I don't know about you, when I'm looking for a plumber, I like to read my reviews. HomeAdvisor.com gave me some reviews on our sponsor, Art of Plumbing. Called them. They arrived on time. Immediately found the plumbing issue and fixed it right the first time. I called them last year and it was great. I called them again this year because I had a problem again. They came out, they fixed the problem. They even gave me solutions to help stop the problem in the future at 541-9405. Thank you so much for joining us on Other People's Shoes. Of course, you know, I'm your host, Neil Matthews. Thank you for joining us today. Merry Christmas to you. It'll be here next Wednesday. Are you excited? Have you finished your holiday shopping yet? Well, if you haven't, let this be a little bit of a motivation for you. Today, we sit down with our guest, Daniel Craig, who is the host of Happiness and Progress. Now, I don't know about you, that alone causes a little bit of intrigue, a little bit of what? So stay tuned for her. It's going to be awesome. But before we get to Danielle, remember to stay tuned till the end of the episode to hear about our prickly pear announcement. This is your last opportunity to take part in our gift card giveaway. So stay tuned for that. Without further ado, here's Danielle, and I hope you enjoy it because we're gonna get into happiness and progress right now. Hey, come take a walk with me, not like you used to do. Do something different and put yourself in other people's shoes. Open up your mind and open up your eyes and change your direction, change your perspective. Welcome in to Other People's Shoes, of course. You know, I'm your host, Neil Matthews. Today, much like most shows, we, we get excitement, right? Excitement is in the air. The holiday season is about us. Hopefully, your tree is up. It's decorated. By the way, if you want to send some presents our way, we're always grateful for more presents. But today, we get a present, a gift in it itself. We sit down today with an Emmy Award-winning journalist. We keep getting great guests. Who's our booker, by the way, Garrett? Whoever it is, let's get them a present. She's a mom of two boys and a little girl. She has also recently admitted that she's a recovering pessimist. She's, uh, she's done blogs. She's done podcasts. She's even been on the news. Holy cow, she's done so many things. She tries to find the joy in everyday life. Help me welcome host and journalist, and just a really good person, right? Help me welcome Happiness and Progress host, Danielle Craig. Danielle, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me and for that introduction. Well, (laughs) you know, we we just try to have some fanfare. (laughs) I I was going to actually play a little sounder of some fanfare, but Garrett, just he's just mean. He just nicks that, just took took that out. So, Danielle, I got to tell you a story really fast before we get going too far. So I'm sitting with my mom over dinner, while back and my mom says hey how's the show going what's going on she always likes to know you know moms always want to you know kind of know what their kids are up to and so i share with her mom we got danielle craig she's like oh you did i love her i love her so much she's like will you tell her that i miss her on the news i was like yeah if it comes up we'll we'll share that with her so obviously it came up. Oh, so. that's so sweet. I appreciate that. Yeah, I thought you might like that. So, uh, so you are missed, and I know you may. You know, we'll get into that maybe. But, uh, but before we get too far, Daniel, we got to ask this most important question, and that's this: What size shoes do you wear? Eight, and that is an important question because you can't know how to walk in another person's shoes without knowing their shoe size. That's why we do it. <laughs> wow, that's good. Yeah, eight. And is there a certain brand? Uh, is there a certain brand or style that you love more than another? No, to be honest, I'm super. I, well, I was going to say I'm super cheap on shoes. I'm super cheap on dress shoes. I'm just not. If you would have come when I was anchoring the news, you would have seen me wearing a really nice dress, nice makeup, nice hair, and then like tennis shoes. <laughs> so I'm just kind of a tennis shoes person more than a heels fancy person. But I love when I pick tennis shoes. I love. Nikes, obviously. <laughs> is there a certain is there a certain style of Nike uh, or anything like that, or just you're just a Nike girl? No, I really like to run. So when I'm running, I just go to a store and I look at the Nikes and I ask which is the best for running, <laughs> and then I look for you know one of my favorite colors, teal or pink, and that's how I choose shoes, which is probably not you know really calculated, but. No, I, I'm just not a big I shoe. love that. Garrett's shaking his head because <laughs> um, I admit this wholeheartedly. I recently just bought a pair of shoes. 
I have a uh-huh. shoe problem. I have upwards of 50 pairs of shoes. Um, oh, my goodness. Garrett actually got to visit the studio a while back, and uh, most of the shoes were in the floor of the studio. And he goes, it's amazing that you can even get in here to work because there's so many That's shoes. Amazing. There's a lot. And so uh, my shoe story is I bought some some spikes, some running spikes, some track spikes uh, for uh, a race that I did uh, recently. So, yeah, uh, I have a shoe problem. I need to probably go to yeah. shoe, shoe People's Anonymous or something. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's, amazing. there's I, the shoe well, connection. I grew up with a little sister, two years younger than me, and she was the same as you. She just had, like, at one point we had this really cool built-in closet and just dozens of shoes, really fancy, cute, every kind of shoe you could imagine within her closet. I tried for a while and it just wasn't, it wasn't me. So I'm like, you want all these extra shoes? <laughs> well, my, my shoe obsession is really bad because, um, I too, I buy shoes on, on sale. And so what I'll do is I'll find a good pair of shoes. I might wear them a couple of times, but then I then will swap back to another pair and then I kind of circle them around. So they, they really get a lot of life out of them, but, um, but it is, it's, That's it's, what matters. it's bad. It's really bad. Some, some, some might say I need help with that. So, so with that, I want to lead off with this, with this really important question. I know you were, you and Trish, Trish Gloss, uh, you're on her off script podcast, which by the way is another great podcast. If you're not listening to ours or, you know, happiness and progress, uh, off script's pretty good with, with Trish Gloss, but you said something and it kind of caught my ear and that was this is, is gratitude. So I'm curious, Danielle, mm-hmm. how do you develop gratitude? Mm, I think gratitude is, a, has to be a daily practice in your life. I, what I do is every single day I write down three things I'm grateful for in my journal. And I've realized when I'm not doing this, it's a little bit harder to get through life because life is difficult. I'm a mom of three kids under the age of eight and they are kids <laughs> under the age of eight and they're, a, they're hard to deal with at times. And I realize when I'm not writing the things I'm grateful for, which a lot of times I'm grateful for them. That's what I write. they are funny things they said or the cute smile or the cute note they wrote me. When I'm not doing that, I have a lot harder time dealing with the everyday mess over here and drama at school and waking up at three in the morning. When I'm not focusing on the things I'm thankful for, I'm focusing on the chaos in the moment. And so I think that's why it's so important to start with gratitude. And in the podcast, I've really learned that so many people lean on gratitude to get through the tough parts of life. Yeah, I, I think that's great, too, because I think so many times, especially, you know, just coming off of Thanksgiving and, and things like that, it's easy to be having gratitude when we're called to be thankful for things, right? Mm -hmm. It's easy to Mm -hmm. have gratitude during this holiday season, even, right? When we're talking about, you know, Christmas and the gift of giving and the reason for the season and all that, all that sounds fun. And and, and conceptually is like, yeah, we can raise our hand and high five each other for that. But I love what you're saying there of taking the small moments in life and really documenting them and and even journaling them. Mm -hmm. That, that to me was, wow, Mm -hmm. that was a good takeaway there. I really like that. So um, there's something about actually writing it down. And I always talk about this story because especially in this holiday season, it can be easy to get trapped in. Well, I don't have the money for the gifts or I don't have someone special to spend this holiday with, or I don't have et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think we have to start super simple and we live in a place. Well, any of your listeners who are living in America most likely have clean water. (laughs) We have clean water. And if you cannot think of something you are thankful for right now, I always tell people to start with the clean water because that's not something everyone in our world has. And it's something that keeps us alive. And I think that's where we can start. Number one. Yeah. And, and again, I, I've, I've been to other countries. I don't know if you have as well, but but in Mexico specifically, I remember taking mission trip, you know, as a youth, you know, in high school and even as an adult. And and the big disclaimer was don't drink the water. And, uh, you know, yeah. I remember I remember we were at uh, like a Baskin Robbins or, or something similar with some girls uh, and, and another guy and I and we started getting ice cream and the, the gal dunked the, the scooper into some water. And we all just knew we were going to get sick and. Luckily, or blessedly, yeah. we, we did not get sick. But, uh, but no, I, I think you're absolutely, you're, you're right on with what you're saying, and I love that so much. So uh, I have a desk calendar, maybe much like you, 
and I love quotes. I'm just a big quote guy. I'm a quote nut. Uh, next to shoes, it's probably my next uh, closest obsession outside of my, <laughs> my wife and my love affair with, uh, with my Tar Heels and, of course, my daughter. But, but outside of all those things, I really like quotes. And I came across this quote, and it, it just resonated with me, and I wanted to share it with you and then get your thoughts on it. And, and that's this quote of this. And, and maybe you'll like it. Maybe you won't. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. So a little progress each day adds up to big results. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. In my podcast, a lot of what I've been focusing on for the last two years is happiness. But it occurred to me that we find the happiness through the other part of the name of my podcast that I wasn't focusing on as much, which is the progress. Because so often we're taught that we need to, well, we start as little kids. We need to get to graduation. We need to go to college. We need to have a career. And we have all of these endpoint goals. And we can get really focused on making it to the end point. And that was really how I was living my life. I was like, I'm going to be happy once I get my job. And my first job was in radio. So then I knew I would be happy once I had a job in TV. I was working behind the scenes. Then at that point, I knew once I got on TV, I would be happy. <laughs> I got on TV, still waiting for happiness. And so I knew once I won an Emmy, I would be happy. And then I, the next day, you know, I'm the same person still waiting for happiness. And then I knew if I worked in a bigger market, then I would be happy, happier. And I was always chasing happiness by chasing the end point, the end goal. But what I've come to realize is that the point, the part that matters is the growth, which is the progress. The part that matters in our life and who we're becoming and taking opportunities in this life as a learning world and a learning life is to appreciate the growth and find the joy in the growth. Even when it's hard, the progress is hard and it's messy and it's not always as beautiful as standing up on a stage and holding a gold statue, but it's the part that matters and it's the part that shapes who we are. And I think when we lose the growth, that's when it's really, really difficult to find happiness. When we lose the progress, we lose working towards something that's when it's really hard to, to find joy and to tune into that joy. So wait, let me get this straight. The day after you won the Emmy, you were still Danielle Craig, news anchor. <laughs> I'm, I'm so confused by this. Well, I, it's so funny because I really felt like I'm going to win this Emmy and then life is going to be different. Like life is going to be, everyone's going to, you know, respect me at work. I'm going to feel really happy. I'm going to be like, look at me and my gold statue. But it really, I mean, it was an amazing moment. And in the moment, there was a lot of joy and excitement. But the next day, I was still the same person. I wasn't like I had, I had just magically become the happiest person in the world. And it kind of shows you a little bit of the mindset I was in, which is not the mindset I live in anymore, but the mindset that I needed more. I had to have more. I, to be happy, I needed to achieve and accomplish continually. And that just, that's not a really healthy way to be living. And so I've kind of tried to take my mind off of the achievement and more on the progress and finding my joy in the progress instead of in the achievement. Does that make sense? You know, it does. And uh, so many times, I'm sure, you know, being in the Valley and, and living here in Oregon for a little bit, you guys have been to Crater Lake, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and it's gorgeous for those who have never been to Crater Lake, please come to Oregon and, and take part in that. Cause it's <laughs> awesome. Right. It's just, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's breathtaking. Yeah. Um, Good my wife there. and I got to, uh, a while back, got to snowshoe through Crater Lake, which is fantastic and, uh, just awesome. But all along the way, the, the ranger is telling us, look at where we've come, look at, at what we've yeah. accomplished. Look at what you're doing. By the way, look out there at Crater Lake. Oh, it's still out there. Don't worry. It hasn't gone anywhere. But enjoy the journey. And and I think, again, yeah. just what you're saying just really resonated with me on that because I think, again, so many times we focus so much on the finish line. We forget about mm -hmm. the yeah. race in the middle from the starting line to mm -hmm. the finish line. We, we forget about the journey, the hill that, that made us cry. I mean, maybe you're not a crier. I am sometimes when I run up hills, but, but <laughs> yeah, I'm a crier. Okay. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. But, but I love what you're saying on that. And I think so many times, again, that horizon just keeps moving. Right. And so we keep trying to grasp at it mm -hmm, and then, yeah. and then mm -hmm. what we're left empty and, and, and not that you were feeling empty. Maybe I'm not, 
projecting that on you by any means, but but maybe right. I don't know. All right. So but I mean, in that time, I was having a conversation with my husband, saying I'm not happy, and I was happy with him, and I was happy with our family, and I was happy, you know, with our home. I just wasn't happy with the the achievement and the outcome that I was producing, which is kind of funny when people hear me say that when they're people that watched me on the news on the highest rating rated news uh, morning show. But that's, that's how I was feeling. And it was just because I had curated this life for myself where outcome and achievement equaled self-worth and equaled happiness. And that just can't be because imagine doing that crater lake snowshoeing or on a hike or on a drive or literally anything where you're trying to get to an end point. If you just have your head down, you're missing out on all of the incredible sites on all of the amazing learning opportunities, because that drive is the place where we're growing and we're learning and we're becoming who we're meant to be and finding joy. I think that's why so many times in our building at work, I don't take the elevator because I want to take the stairs and enjoy the journey. Even though it may leave me winded yeah. in the end, you know, I still love that. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you talk about your journey, you talk about, you know, being in media for so long and, and you know, having the, the lack of fulfillment or lack of happiness using your words. So, so think of an event or maybe you have an event already uh, where you had to persevere and it can be professionally or personally, whichever. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do want to tell you, I loved my job, which is, it just doesn't even make any sense how I calculated my life, but I loved being a news anchor. I loved presenting the news every morning. I'm not even sure that that is something I won't go back to in the future of my life somewhere, but for some reason it was, I was focusing on the wrong thing in in the job. So if I went back now, would I be focusing on the right thing? Would I be focusing on the daily instead of the achievement? I I think so. So that I think it was more of a mindset issue than a job issue. So your question, persevering. So actually 2017, when I made the decision to leave the industry was my big persevering year. It was just hit after hit. I call it my wake up year. I had within maybe four to six months, I had a miscarriage. My son was hospitalized with severe asthma. He split his head open, needed staples. Um, my other son had a routine surgery. And my husband dropped in our kitchen and I called 911 and the paramedics got there. And when they were there, his heart was connected to machines. And within that time, he flatlined for eight seconds. His heart didn't beat. And in that time... <laughs> It was uh, just absolutely terrifying, and I needed to kind of figure out what I wanted to do in my life because in that moment, I thought I was losing my husband, and I was so not okay with the way I was living my life, which was on four hours of sleep and not seeing my husband you know, for days and days and days at a time, maybe maybe two hours on the weekend, but then I would fall asleep, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't have any time. So persevering through all of that, I'm trying to think of what, how did I do that? I had a lot of anxiety about losing my husband and I was at the time training for a marathon. So I would be out running and I would have a full on anxiety attack about losing my husband because his heart just stopped. There were days that I went into work and we're writing the news and I turned to our director and I'm like, I got to go home because I got to look at my husband and watch him while he's breathing to make sure he continues breathing. And there were a couple of times I, I left and went home just to sit next to him <laughs> and make sure that his heart was beating. Um, so it was a really, really scary time in our lives. And this is when my wake up happened was that I started to slow down in life. I started to, to deal with all of that anxiety. I started meditating I started running. I was training for a marathon. And in that training for a marathon, I was also, I was seeing it kind of like an act of service because I was doing it for the memory of my 17-year-old cousin who had passed 10 years before. And between slowing down, taking those moments to meditate, running, getting my mind off of all of the things, and service, I was able to kind of control that anxiety and see a clearer picture of my life and stop kind of worrying in the day-to-day -day and and pushing forward and making big change in my life, obviously, because that's when I, I left the news. But my that secret combination were those three things, slowing down because it wasn't something I did and 
and that physical exercise, probably the serotonin helped, but, uh, my mind off things while I was running and, um, and that service. Wow. Eight seconds. What were you thinking? Eight in those, seconds. Yeah, that I is mean, a what, long what, time. Yeah, it is a long time. What were you thinking in those eight <laughs> seconds? Can, could you? I mean, I don't want to take you back to that painful time, but I mean, what, what do you? Yeah. What flashes? What is flashing through your mind at that point? It's amazing when things like this happen because the amount of thoughts that can go through a human mind in eight seconds—it's—it's it's incredible. So my husband had been to the hospital a lot of times within the year or two before that feeling like he was having a heart attack and biologically that's, you know, in, in his line. And so in the moment that he passed out before he was even connected to the machines from the paramedics before his heart stopped, I, I thought it was the end of his life. And in those moments he, he started shaking and he falls to the ground and I'm trying to catch him simultaneously call 911. And what went through my mind was just regret. <laughs> like, simultaneously regret and I've got to do CPR <laughs> to the tune of staying alive. And so I, I get him flat and I didn't have to do CPR. He, he ended up coming to, and he was, he was fine seemingly for those moments. But what I realized in that moment in, in those moments was like, I need, I need to be more committed to being present with my husband more often because we weren't even having real conversations because of the way we were living life and the way that I was so tired and always working. And, um, and that was kind of like recommitted me in those moments. And I mentioned how I had said, I'm not happy. I said that literally days before this happened and it was just my wake up call to, I've got to, I've got to be present. And the only, I wasn't even thinking about, you know, what's to come? What would I do without my husband? I was just thinking about the regret of not being all in every single day. So I don't know about you, but I'm a person of faith. And so I think sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I, I believe in God. I'm, I'm not uh, ashamed to say that. So I think sometimes, at least in my life, God has, has allowed situations or, or, or maybe situations have happened. I, I believe he allows everything but uh, he's allowed situations to take place that has really woke me up. The alarm clock, the mm -hmm. proverbial wake up call, whatever it may be. The, you know, hotel, you know, fancier hotels, they like call you. Hey, Mr. Matthews, it's time to wake up, you know, whatever it may be. And so do you think that eight seconds was really, truly the, the wake up call? Yeah, I think so. I think it was like, God's like, hey, here's a miscarriage. It's time to slow down your life. And I'm like oh my goodness, I'm going to just shut down instead. And then the next thing, my, my son is hospitalized with severe asthma. And I'm, I'm in the hospital with a couple of days for my kid who can't breathe. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I can be present. I've got to be present. This is, this is a sign, you know, I'm here for my son. I can be present. And then, <laughs> and then I, I go back to, you know, not, not <laughs> living presently. And so it's like, okay, Here's your here's your husband's heart stopping for eight seconds. So let's clue in to my message and and slow down a little bit and and live a life that's that's fulfilling where you're appreciating and feeling grateful every single day. So yes, I'm laughing because I do think it was. No, I, like I I think sometimes we have to laugh. You, you know, even when it's tough, I, <laughs> like I laugh at the most like, awkward moments. On. People are like, "That wasn't really funny, Neil," like, and I'm like, "But I have to laugh because <laughs> if I don't, I'm gonna yeah. probably start crying and I cry on the I inside think what like makes a winner." Me laugh about it is how hard headed I was and and how I was just you know head down doing my thing and how many how many times I needed to be you know. I needed someone to shake me to say, Hey, hello, this is not the path for you. This is not your plan. This is not your lane. I hear that a lot. So as yeah. a runner, as a fellow yeah. runner, I can respect that. That's not your lane. So, um, mm -hmm. so I'm curious, we'll, we'll transition a little bit, maybe, uh, less, uh, less emotional eight seconds of craziness and, and turmoil and trauma. Uh, what is the greatest gift you've ever received? Being that it's, you know, the mm. holiday season, you know, let's talk about some gifts, right? Yeah. Hmm. The greatest gift I've ever received. Huh. That's such a hard question. 
Have I um, stumped the uh, Emmy Award winning journalist? Well, I just want it to be a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, I'm tr- <laughs> it can be superficial. Um, it's fine. Nobody will my, judge you. I promise. My, well, the first answer that came to mind, I'll just go with this. I was trying to think of something a little bit deeper and a little more meaningful, but this was really, really sweet. I had um, purchased myself a camera and I was super excited about it. I purchased it on Black Friday. And when it came down to it, I just like could not afford <laughs> the camera that I purchased myself. And so I took it back to the store and, you know, whatever. I was I was sad, but I parted with my camera that I couldn't afford the first place. I shouldn't have purchased it. Uh, a month later, when it was Christmas, my husband, it was like Christmas Eve, my husband's like, hey, I got you a gift and I want you to open it the day before Christmas, just in case you need it. And I opened it and it was the same camera I'd purchased. He purchased it uh, for me. And um, are you kidding me? It was just like, we go from so trauma sweet. of your husband to that romantic Hallmark moment. I know. Right. Seriously? Uh, that was actually, I think that was like Garrett's a year. crying over before. here. Okay. I know. Is not that sweet? So he, so I just think that just the, the love that went behind that gift and the thought and, how, you know, he had to sacrifice his own finances and whatever it was to make that happen for me. And that was just really, you know, really thoughtful. That's awesome. So uh, along the way, obviously, we, we've talked about your happiness. We talked about your journey. We've talked about, you know, kind of the breaking point, right? We've talked about all that stuff. Uh, you know, being a mom has its challenges. I, I would imagine I'm not one, but I'm a dad. So I, I, by the way, I think moms do it way better than dads do. I don't, that's may sound sexist, but I don't, I don't care. It's my show. I can get away with that. But, but how have you learned so much along the way to have happiness throughout your life? Like, like what are the moments? Maybe there's some, you know, some, some benchmarks or some places along the way that you're like, that made me happy. That made me happy. This is making me happy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think that my benchmarks have been in <laughs> the parts of life that are not super happy. So, you know, walking away from the hospital the night my husband was admitted and looking up at the stars, and it was just like so vast that night and there were so many stars and I was just so grateful that he was he was alive and that his heart had started beating again. And I, I remembered that moment as like a like really truly feeling joy that that my husband was okay and then I had another moment several months later maybe four or five months later and I was up in the middle of the night with my son who was sick he was throwing up all over the place and literally all over the place and I was standing I was kneeling in front of him trying to figure out you know what he was what, what he needed what what he felt like and he started throwing up and he was moving his head side to side like screaming while throwing up (laughs) all over my face and in that moment I I had just put out a podcast episode and I think it was about perspective (laughs) and in that moment I just felt like you know what I have this kid who's alive who's in front of me, who has some stomach bug, but is not fighting for his life is, is really totally fine. And I just felt this huge amount of gratitude for that moment. And I, I really believe that gratitude equals joy. So I think that moment is one that I come back to a lot in the difficultness that is life that you can have a kid throwing up in your face and still feel joy for what you have and in your life. I think that was a really critical moment for me that I still go back to. I, I'm just visualizing this, you know, I'm a visual person by <laughs> nature. So I'm, I, so help me. I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk back through this with you, but <laughs> again, moms do it better than dads. Again, I have, I have one of the greatest moms, if not the greatest mom in the world. Uh, I love her dearly. Uh, and she's obviously a big fan of yours too. So anyway, but I'm, I'm trying to visually think this through, right? So you're, you're probably covered in vomit or or pretty close to covered in vomit. Uh, And yet you're still finding the joy that is down deep inside of you. And I think that could be a metaphor for life, right? When everyone is vomiting mm -hmm. around you and vomiting on you, where do you find your joy? And so, uh, I think that's, that's powerful stuff. I, I think that a big part of it is that that happened when I had published that episode and it is stuff that I'm, 
I literally try to live and focus on every single day. And I feel like when you're focusing on, look, I have this beautiful family. Look, I have this beautiful life. life. Look, I'm healthy right now. Look, I have a home. I feel like when you focus on all of that good stuff in your life, it's a little harder to get caught up in, oh, well, I can't find my keys anywhere in the house. Oh, well, my kid's throwing up in my face. Well, I don't know. I, I can't afford you know, this, these shoes that I want this month. You know, wow. I, I just think Tread lightly. it's Tread a lot lightly. easier to be grateful. <laughs> Thank you for the shoe reference. Well, you'll always be able to find the money for the shoes. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I have to say no. <laughs> so... But, but, but Daniel, I, I really do. I love what you're saying. I love, I love the fact that you've had this world, uh, figuratively speaking, you've had this world vomit on you. You've had your kids even vomit on you and you still are trying to find the joy and to share the joy and to bring that. I call it the light. Cause I think everyone has the light in some respects, trying to bring that light to the world and, and, and I, I don't know. I just think you're, you're really an inspiration as far as that goes. So, uh, kudos kudos on that for sure. Aww, thank you. You know, I, I have a lot of perspective in this and I see that the things that I've walked through are not the hardest things, are not the worst things. And there are so many people who I've talked to who've come on my podcast, who I did news stories on, who were literally living the nightmare of what is human life. I mean, that, that was news going into the living room and sitting down with a person whose child is missing. Uh, talking to someone who is standing outside their home that's on fire. Those those kinds of situations, I think, really show the real and true perseverance in this life, and and that that spirit that is, uh, it's like the amazing human spirit that is. And in all of those stories that I covered, and watching that kind of the most horrible parts of human life unravel in all of that. A lot of the times I would see the beauty in, in what is humanity, which is that perseverance, not only that, but this incredible way that people step up for one another and do each other, carry one another with garage sales to make change for someone's cancer treatment or to, gather supplies for someone who's lost their home. I mean, that, I think I, I'm so thankful that you can see in me what I've persevered through, but I just really want to say that it's like, you know, it's not, not anything huge compared to just so many incredible people who I've talked to. And I don't, I, I, I just want to mention them because they are I like the heroes of life. I want to say, but, but, yeah, no, I, they, I, they've who I, they're who I've learned from. Yeah, I think I get what you're saying. It, it, it's not you. It's it's the people who have changed your life, who have had a ripple effect on your life, mm-hmm. and who have kind of had that uh, re- reverberating. There's the word reverberating effect on you. No, I I, I think you're absolutely right. I think yeah. everybody and going through things that are like so much harder than me. Like I've I've talked to a woman who lost her kid in a school shooting and. And thought, like, how could you forgive someone who can do that when I, you know, I'm having a hard time forgiving the person who cut me off on the I-5. I- so I think, I think that those are the people who I'm gleaning information from and learning from and trying to be more like. And I'm by far not perfect in the process. Well, I don't think any of us are. So that's good that you can admit that. <laughs> My wife's pretty close to perfection, but but outside of that, no. That's uh, good. I love that's her. Good. But yeah, anyway, uh, yeah. So I'm curious of this too. Um, so why why should I, why should you, why should others not depend on others for happiness? Because it's been said, right? Uh, you mm-hmm. can't find happiness. If you can't find happiness within yourself, you're never going to find it in anyone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking about that, how codependence on any person can really unravel your life. Because if you put your happiness in somebody else's actions, and also you put your self-worth in somebody's actions and how much they love you and, and care about you, then then that, that that's just a, I'm trying to think of the nicest, most poetic way to say it. Um, and just putting your eggs in, in a basket that you're not responsible for. I just think that the only person you can be responsible for 
is yourself. And we all know that the only reaction you can be responsible for is your own. The only things you think and the only things you chase and the goals you have and the things that are important to you, you have to put that in your own, you have to put that within yourself. Otherwise you're putting, you're, you're giving it to someone else and they may drop that basket. And then what happens to all of those eggs? You put in the basket? I, I just think it's really, really important to, to carry that happiness for yourself. Yeah, I, I do too. And and I think, and, and maybe I'm guilty of this. No, I don't think. I know I'm guilty of this. Garrett's laughing because it's true. I, for years, have put my faith and trust and, and really approval in other people, you know, and, mm-hmm. and that's a huge struggle for me because, you know, I grew up with a great mom, but my dad was in and out. He was a Marine, is a Marine. There's there's He's a former Marine. And so I put so much faith and trust in the fact of seeking his approval. I mean, I have crazy story after crazy story of trying to win his, his approval over and, uh, and to no avail, right? That, that proverbial horizon that we talked about as far as achievement, but can, can also translate into people because they're going to let you down. They're going to move, you know, away. They're going to move the expectations and, or not meet our expectations even. Yeah. I love that. So, um, yeah, you know, I think, I think when we put our happiness into anything and not only people, which is not a huge struggle for me, but the searching for approval from other people. But the thing that I think I've struggled with is putting my happiness in certain identities. So I put my happiness in, I'm a news anchor. So look at me, I'm a news anchor. That's where all my joy lies. And so when making that choice to walk away from that, I really had to separate my joy and my title or my self-worth and my title from that identity. And even an identity as a mom or a wife or a daughter, all of those identities shift and change throughout life. You know, my, someday my kids are going to grow up and they're going to be adult children. And I, of course I'll still be their mom, but the way that I mother them will be, will have evolved. And I think if we're so caught up in an identity that brings us self-worth and joy, it's really difficult for us to evolve and to find joy in the evolution, if that makes sense. So me evolving from being a news anchor, I had to be okay with myself as a human being, not be okay with myself as a news anchor, validate myself, not because I'm a news anchor, but because I'm a human being on earth and I, and I unraveled kind of like an onion, took off every single layer like I feel worse because I'm on TV every morning. I feel worse because I'm a news anchor and started taking off all of these onion layers to discover who, who is at the core of that? Who am I? If not a news anchor was the question I was asking. And I I came up with, I'm a daughter of God and it doesn't have to, you know, for a person not of faith, which I know most of your listeners are of faith. Right. But if they're not, you know, it could be, I'm a person in the universe. I, I, I am, existing here. I have a, I have talents that only I have in this world and a voice only I have in this world. I think once we get down to the very center of the onion and can be okay with who we are just as an individual, not as, as a parent and not as the role you play at work and the role you play in your marriage and the role you play with your siblings, but just as an individual, I think that opens up so many doors to evolve and to grow and to find joy more often with the different people in your life. Yeah. And, and again, I, 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 again, I have to just say, I really love what you're saying. I really do. I think it's so important that people remember that and hear that. So if you're not hearing it from me, hear it from somebody who knows she used to give the mm-hmm. news after all, for goodness oh. sakes. Right. So, so here's my question, Danielle, we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to, our next season, when we start January, so we're going to start January 1 with our fourth season. We're so excited about that, that we've been privileged enough to get through four seasons in a year. Of course, our seasons are only 16 shows, so we're on our, th- our third season right now, which is what you're in. But our fourth season is, is going to start January 1. But in that fourth season, I'm curious because we're going to be addressing this topic, so maybe you'll help us transition a little bit because you'll be our last show before our year-end show wrap-up. And that's this. What did being a news anchor cost you personally? There, whatever job you have, there's a cost. No matter what you're doing in life, there's a cost. And for a lot of years, the cost 
you know, it made sense to me and I was willing to pay it. And when it came to that wake up year and I realized, Hey, look, I was giving up, giving up all this time with my husband. And here he is like <laughs> not having a beating heart for eight seconds. That was the wake up call that this cost is too much right now. I can't pay this right now. And I think that's what, if someone's on the fence about, you know, what should I do with my life or my job? I think it's the cost versus the benefit. You have to take a moment to determine, does this make sense to me right now in my life? And making a decision today doesn't mean it's set in stone and you can never go back to it. And I will always keep the door open. Um, but I think it's important to have that, have that discussion with yourself. What's the cost versus the benefit? Well, and that's what our, that's what our third, our four seasons going to be talking about is just the idea of what's your identity. You know, how does that play mm-hmm. into your vision? And of course, along the way, before you begin any journey, you have to consider the cost. So, so that's what we're going to be talking about in January, a little preview for our listeners Ooh. out there. So if you'd like to listen, of course, we of course would welcome that too, Danielle. So I want to kind of wrap yeah. up with, uh, with a couple of questions. First, uh, first one is this is if, if someone had only, uh, an ability to listen, not, not, this is not real, obviously, because they can listen as much as they want. But if they only had four episodes to listen to of happiness and progress, what four would you pick for them to go listen to? <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, I almost have a hundred. Um, I, I, you almost have a hundred? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's I would a lot, say, right? I that's mean, what I'm saying. But like narrow them down one. to, to your, to your four, yeah. uh, to your four. Like if you're, you're selling the show, right? You're trying to get syndicated, okay. whatever. Hey, here's the four you need to go listen to that, that's my best work or best interview. I don't know. So I'd start with the first one. Um, it's about expectations and how we live with these expectations. And when we don't meet an expectation, we let it crumble our world. And it's just a really harmful place to be because you don't see the beauty in where you are and you let <laughs> what you thought would have would have happened when you made goals when you were eight years old and it didn't happen, so you let yourself be unhappy. Uh, the next one, I interviewed Alyssa Parker. I alluded to her interview a little bit earlier. Of, she lost her daughter in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, and that interview has changed my life. That interview has allowed me to have more grace for people. She talks about forgiving the shooter and the way that she was able to forgive the shooter was to see that he was a human with, with um, not a full understanding of the world and who had issues in his own, in his own life. And by seeing that he didn't have all the capabilities and that she didn't have the full mental scope of what he was dealing with, she could not possibly judge him. So she gave that judgment away to God. And of course, if you're not someone of religion, you give it to someone else. And I've been able to go back to that so many times with much, much smaller, smaller bouts of forgiveness. I'm not sure I could do that in her spot. But being able to offer people more grace in everyday life, whether that's just that they're taking forever in the grocery store line with a bazillion coupons or saying something rude to me or being, you know, not a nice person to my child, if we can offer them grace and and teach them grace, it makes a huge difference. It's made a huge difference in my life. So I'd say that number two. And okay, I have to choose two more. And I feel like I already have answered the question for so long. (laughs) I'm sorry. Let me think. Oh my goodness. I don't have a list of them in front of me. That's okay. Um, Because we got asked that recently too, Garrett and I did. And uh, we struggled. Uh, Garrett actually... Let me restate that. He's correcting me. Um, Garrett was just right out of the big gate, just like, bam, 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 here they are. And then they, the, <laughs> the host asked me, you know, well, hey, you're hosting this show. What's your, what's your favorite shows? And I'm like, um, well, uh, so I get you. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. That's why I asked you because I'm like, huh, I'm going to torture somebody else. No, 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 no. So I just, I mean, Every single time I put out an episode, I'm like, this is my best episode <laughs> because I, I, you know, I pour my heart and my soul into these episodes and the people that come on the podcast, they're just so incredible, every single one of them. And I just always feel uplifted and changed and, and it's, so it's hard to narrow it down. Okay. I'll let Ooh, you off. I'll, you know, okay. Go ahead. One. I was going to let you off the hook, are. but go ahead. And then I okay, want to respond to what you just said because it's funny. Personal. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Kozar is a friend of mine and he, um, he 
lost his brother in a drunk driving accident, and he ended up writing a book, um, a fiction book, about a character who dies in a drunk driving accident, and he has to then come back. God, in this fiction book, gives him a choice to come back and be, you know, the he didn't call him like guardian angel, but like the spiritual mentor of another person. And he comes back, he chooses that path and he comes back and he gets to be the guardian angel to the guy who killed him. And it's just a beautiful, the fiction book is so beautiful. And the conversation we had is so beautiful because it was kind of him working through forgiveness, maybe not all the way forgiving, but kind of trying to get inside the head of someone who had taken the life of, you know, his brother And it was just a really, really beautiful conversation. I took a lot away from that conversation as well. I like that. Yeah. So as you're explaining, like, you know, each show means something to you. Each person brings value. You love each show. Every show is the best show. Like, it's better than the last (laughs) one, right? You're saying all of that. Garrett looks at me and he just starts laughing and pointing because that was my exact (laughs) answer. Almost (laughs) verbatim verbatim mm-hmm. of what mm-hmm. my answer was to uh the show that we were on so uh yeah thank it's, you it's hard it's, it is it's really people hard. don't I know that people don't know that they're like your children i mean i only yeah, have one right. you have okay. three so you know they're like your yeah. children yeah. but i'm gonna give you a fourth one because i just thought of it okay i'm gonna do the live this so is the live event I oh had, that's right uh, yeah you did a live event yeah, yeah, yeah. we're fighting for the audio on this episode is not the best but it's such powerful insights about loving yourself, who you are today, not the self that you're like, I've got to be X, Y, Z to be lovable, but to be lovable today is so huge. And it happened in this incredible event with a hundred women all around, like feeling these messages and understanding that they have value and they're of worth. And it was just such a powerful moment and it's a powerful podcast episode as well. Thank you. All right. I picked four. You did. You picked four. Great job. So uh, we're going to wrap. I'm going to give you uh, give you an opportunity to tell us about happiness and progress, and then we're going to play a game, and then uh, and then I'll kind of have some final, so- final thoughts. So go ahead. Tell us about okay. happiness and progress. How, right. how can people listen, um, that whole thing? Happiness and progress is a podcast all about finding joy in the everyday, the good days, the bad days, the in-between, and finding – I talk to people who – are the example of perseverance, are the example of forgiveness, are the example of living a better life. And I talk to experts on the show too, who are the best in their field at getting better sleep and having better relationships and eating better. And between all of that, I feel like I cover happiness pretty well. And you can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts. And I'm recently just now uploading podcast episodes to YouTube. So if that's easier for people, they can watch it on YouTube, but also all the regulars, the Apple podcast app on your iPhone, uh, Stitcher, every place you can find a podcast. You can ask Siri and Alexa to turn on the happiness and progress podcast and they go. Yeah. I asked uh, Alexa to do that for my show and uh, we mm-hmm. have the explicit uh, filter on for my daughter because you know we don't want to listen to Cardi B and some of that nonsense and so <clears throat> it actually won't play my show because we've had a couple of shows that were of adult nature and and so we had to mark them explicit so right. sadly oh. Alexa just goes I'm sorry I can't play that I'm like do it anyway Alexa <laughs> no. so anyway but <laughs> no that's really cool that it can uh, yeah for just, a just, moment. just for a moment right it's fun Daniel I gotta be honest you are such a delight and and I mean that I don't say that insincerely we loved having you on today and we're super excited that you gave us a few moments today I'm not sure why uh because we're just you know doing this uh, uh you know kind of on a whim sometimes it feels like a uh, hope and a prayer if i'm gonna go bon jovi but but we really do we appreciate you giving us some time uh it, you're kind of a local celebrity so it's kind of nice that we can say we have a, a local celebrity on so so there we go so uh so thank you again for doing this so garrett is gonna roll for you we play this game at the end of every show called senseless it's a, a list of six questions and you only get one question, so we're going to roll for you because you're not here. Uh, so there's the roll. There's the sound. And you got a number five. So uh, number five is this. What is your favorite thing to taste? Oh, uh, wings. Wings. I knew you were going to say that as soon as you got it. I was like, <laughs> I know the answer to this one. 
because I listened to your show <laughs> with blue Trish. Cheese. And, yeah. Like, I need rings, blue cheese, and Diet Coke. Yeah. Although I don't drink Diet Coke anymore. I mean, I might drink Diet Coke on my birthday, but I now I'm drinking, I think it's Stevia. Okay. Stevia? I think that's what it's called. But it's basically Diet Coke with no aspartame <laughs> and <laughs> no coloring, and it's delicious, and it uh, does not give me migraines. So... That's awesome. I knew as soon as I as but soon yeah. as I saw the five, I was like, I know what she's gonna pick. <laughs> yes. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, if you see me at a wing place, that's I'm in my happy place. Yeah, you're in your your happiness, mm-hmm. and and it's not it's in progress because you're eating the wings, right? It's, it's kind of progress, how that and just I'm like, full circle. Give on me that. forty wings. Yeah. Yep. That's happiness in progress for you. Yeah. Uh, so Danielle, I, again, I just want to thank you so much for doing this with us. Um, I really appreciate it. I think you've had fun. I hope you've had fun. Um, so yeah. we're, we're just going to kind of end with that. And, uh, so stay with us, uh, as we kind of end here. So just one moment, let's see. Oh, can I thank you? I yes. Just thank oh, sorry. You yeah. As of well course. for having me on. And I appreciate what you're doing. I think that it's incredible to give people a platform and to tell about, their lives and what life is like in their shoes. So I appreciate what you're doing as well. I'm glad you asked. Oh, thank you. We have a prize for you mm-hmm. too. Uh, so we'll get that to you. So for everyone that comes oh. on, we give them a, a little gift. It's, 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 it's nice. Oh, wow. It's just a, just a little, little thank you. I'm making it more than it is. So just be aware of that. <laughs> but, but anyway, so we'll, we'll kind of end with that. And so here we go. Thank you so much for joining us on Other People's Shoes. Of course, you know I'm your host, Neil Matthews. Gotta be honest, happiness and progress, man, that's something we all could strive for, right? That progress along the way, especially in this holiday season time. Thank Danielle Craig so much. Go listen to her show, Happiness and Progress. We, of course, will list the notes down below on how you can do that. On uh, She has social medias as well. I'm sure we'll link that as well. So uh, just go love someone today. It's Christmas after all, right? Anyway, Merry Christmas to you. Stay tuned next week. We, of course, will have a special holiday edition of Other People's Shoes. You don't want to miss that. Garrett gets on the microphone. So stay tuned for that. Until then, remember, when you walk in other people's shoes, you really do get a different perspective on life. Of course, I'm your host, Neil Matthews. Thank you again, and Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining us on Other People's Shoes. I don't know about you, but today's episode was so impactful and so just, wow. When Danielle's retelling that story of her husband when he was incapacitated for that eight seconds and what goes through her mind, that to me was powerful. It really put things back in perspective for me. How about you? That was pretty incredible. It really makes you kind of think during this holiday season, what's really most important? And of course, it's the people around us. It's not the stuff we get. It's the people in our lives. Maybe that would be a a little wisdom for you in this holiday season. By the way, this is your last opportunity to join us on the Prickly Pear giveaway. And now for our Prickly Pear announcement. Hey, we all gotta eat, right? Why not go to 237 North Bartlett Street in Medford and visit the Prickly Pear? There you can sink your teeth into the Cuban sandwich. Mmm. Or the mouth-watering Havana Bowl. Both crowd favorites. The Prickly Pear does catering for work lunches, parties, holiday parties, and weddings. The Prickly Pear is open from 11 to 3, Monday through Friday. Follow the Prickly Pear on Instagram under Prickly Pear 541. And also like them on Facebook under Prickly Pear. The Prickly Pear. Mmm. You'll leave there satisfied. Doesn't that sound just so good? Oh, so excited. So to be a part of that, jump on over to Facebook. You'll see a picture of me in a gingerbread costume. Just comment right below that with the hashtag pricklypair541. And we're, of course, under other people's shoes on Facebook. Jump on over to Instagram. Pretty easy there. OPS Podcast Show under Instagram. Hashtag at pricklypair541. Twitter, a little different. At people's shoes. Just hashtag at pricklypair541. And by the way, stay tuned next week week we have a very special merry christmas edition of other people's shoes for you coming out on christmas so if you're just sitting around got nothing else to do turn on our show we'll have something special for you to unwrap but until next week remember when you walk in other people's shoes you really do get a different perspective on life of course i'm your host neil matthews merry christmas from garrett and myself and we look forward to next week as we sit down in both of our shoes to hear about what's happened this last year on our show thank you again so much and have a great week